Hey folks, a few things have happened over the last few weeks, or more specifically since I uploaded that GTX 970 vs 1050 Ti video. Firstly, the comment section in that video was awash with some of you supporting the GTX 970, but some of you standing absolutely firm on the fact that the RX 470 was the better card. And then shortly after releasing that video suggesting that the 970 was a great alternative to the 470, AMD goes ahead and releases their Polaris refresh, along with the shiny new replacement for the 470. Ok, maybe it's not really new per se, being that it's a simple rebrand, it did give me an idea. Like most of you, we knew that the 570 was incoming, and even had one on pre-order at the request of the same guy who kindly let me benchmark his Ryzen 5 1400 gaming PC. So sitting here just now, I've got my GTX 970, his RX 570, and well, it would just be plain rude not to put these two cards head to head. So on top of that, I'm going to be including figures for the GTX 970 at reference card speeds of 1050 megabytes to give us a GTX 970 baseline, as well as the boosted speeds of my MSI gaming variant at 1115 MHz and my own custom overclock of 1250 MHz, which actually still leaves a few percentage headroom if you want to throw acoustics out the window. For all these tests, the GTX 970's memory is going to be running at an effective speed of 7 GHz. For the red team, we're taking the RX 574GB at stock speeds, which means a core clock of 1244MHz and an effective memory speed of 7GHz, with a full complement of VRAM being able to be addressed by that 256-bit memory bus. Now, we can actually create an RX 470 since there's no architectural changes by simply underclocking the 570 down to 1206MHz on max boost and reducing the effective memory speed to 6.6GHz. This gives us identical performance to what buyers of the 470 will get out of the box. And it's a worst case scenario because a lot of the AIB partners actually ship their 470s with clock speeds that are actually closer to a reference 570 than a reference 470. And finally, to add to this confusion, we're going to be running the 570 with a slight overclock at a maximum boost of 1284 MHz. Now this is one test that I've absolutely no idea what the outcome will be, so let's run through a series of tests and see if we can shed some light onto this GPU battleground. We're going to be running these tests on the R7 1700 overclocked to 3.7 GHz on all 8 cores and 8 GB of DDR4 RAM. The benchmarks for the GTX 970 have been rerun since that last video when I put it against the 1050Ti, since there's been numerous system and BIOS updates over the last few weeks, and we wanted to push the settings a little bit higher too. So let's jump into Rise of the Tomb Raider, and first off we can see that the stock GTX 970 happily edges out the RX series at all frequencies, except when the 570 is overclocked. It is a light win for the GTX card across the board, but the 1-2 frame difference it's kind of negligible, and playing the game on both cards, from my perspective anyway, it yielded pretty much identical results. We have ramped up the detail settings for these tests, and as you can imagine, the game looks fantastic, and even when we saturated the GTX 970's usable 3.5GB of VRAM, the average minimums were still in the same ballpark as the RX 470. A good showing all round, and no real discernible difference between the two. On to an older title now in Crisis 3, and here we see a slight edge given to the green team, with either a stock GTX 970 being on par with AMD's latest RX 570. When overclocked, the Maxwell card pulls ahead even further on both average minimums and overall averages. An overclocked 570 will beat the standard 970, but that overclock and headroom afforded on that Maxwell card means that even a lot of the AIB partners they wouldn't be shipping the 970 at stock speeds. It is a slight win, but it's definitely a game that favours the green team, which is probably kind of apt since you're running about the jungle most of the time. Back to reality now, and running the Hitman benchmark in DirectX 12 with the Ultra preset, SMAA on, and 16 times anisotropic filtering, a bump up from the usual settings we use. And this sees the RX cards take a very, very convincing lead over the GTX 970. This is the most convincing win here so far, with the RX series starting to flex its muscles in newer titles with DirectX 12. If you want further convincing, check out the previous 970 tests, which were run at much lower settings on DirectX 11, and even then, the GTX 970 results were only starting to scratch what the RX 470 can achieve. It is possible that this is down to VRAM saturation on the Maxwell card, but all in all, it was a really convincing AMD win. The game was highly playable on both cards, so maintaining average minimums well above 40fps, even on a stock clock 970. 
Returning a bit more parity, Battlefield 1 plays out evenly across the board, with each car trading blows. Overclock the 470 and it's going to outpace the 970. Overclock the 970 and, well, well, you get the idea. Both cards play out evenly and when moving away from the stock clock speeds, you're easily going to be able to hit an average minimum of 60 FPS. If Battlefield 1 is your thing, then you're going to be happy with either of these cards. Finally, after much requesting on this channel, we've got Doom running on Vulcan. A fantastic game and certainly one of the slickest first person shooters I've played in years. If you own a GTX 970, then you're going to enjoy higher frame rates than in any other game that I've tested in this video. And even on the Ultra preset, your minimums are going to be well above 60 FPS, and the gameplay is silky smooth. The crown, however, is firmly taken by the RX series cards, as even the overclocked 970 cannot match a stock 470. With the RX cards again flexing their muscles nicely when using the newer APIs. And that kind of brings me on to the conclusion. Today, a used RX 470 and a used GTX 970 can be had for around about the same price. A new 570 is going to cost you around £165 or $170 in the US, and it represents really good value for money at that price point. Both cards tested here performed extremely well and should be in your consideration if 1080p gaming is your goal. But which one gets the nod? Well, that kind of depends on two things. Firstly, pricing in your individual area. Can you only find a used 970 with there being no 470s and the new RX 570 costing considerably more? Well, in that case, go with the 970. The RX series cards are not worth that extra money yet, anyway. And that leads me on to point number two. The RX cards will likely perform better than the 970 in future DirectX 12 and Vulcan titles. Will it be the same degree as Hitman and Doom? Well, we can only speculate. But the additional usable VRAM will be useful going forward in games. And in games where the RX cards outperform the 970, it is usually to a larger degree than those older games where the 970 kind of nicks a win with a few FPS. So if you have or are dead set on a GTX 970, then great, it's still a fantastic card. And if you get something like my MSI 970, then you get a high quality card with loads of overclock and headroom. However, if you see your purchase is something a bit more long term and want to take advantage of games using newer APIs, then the red team makes a much more convincing case overall, with its better performance in DirectX 12 and Vulcan, on top of the ability to buy it with either 4 or 8GB of VRAM. So is there a clear cut winner? Well, no. Many titles are DirectX 11 at the moment, and many of the old popular titles still kind of favour the green team, but when things do click for those Polaris cards, well, you see results like Doom and Hitman. And that for me would be kind of hard to ignore. I've enjoyed my time using this RX 570, and I think it's maybe time that I give that Polaris itch a scratch. So one of the comments I've been getting a lot is to use graphs in my videos. So let me know what you think of this format, how it can be improved, or if you've got any other suggestions to make it a bit better. As always folks though, thanks for taking time to watch this, I'll see you all in the comments section down below, and in the next video.